It's day six of Crime Watch in New York City. So it's the sixth day of testimony in the Donald Trump hush money misdemeanor case. And still, the government has not even hinted at a crime. They've talked to Trump assistants who told them that Donald Trump was a really, really nice and very fair boss. Uh, they said they saw Stormy Daniels around a few times. Big deal. They talked to David Pecker, who said that Donald Trump had no idea how the payments to Michael Cohen actually worked. And he also said that he'd been buying stories and setting up similar non-disclosure agreements the very, very same way for decades, for dozens and dozens of people, some of them Democrats even. And then you had lawyers and bankers who told the jury that, you know, Michael Cohen is just not a very smart guy and just a real impatient pain in the ass on top of all that. So there's been a lot about Michael Cohen. One guy even told the jury that it would cost his client another 10 grand if he ever had to call Michael Cohen again. So there's been a lot about Michael Cohen, not very much about Donald Trump and literally nothing about any crimes. And we'll see what today holds. As I record this, it's been a lot of the same. But my gut tells me that Michael Cohen is about to get Donald Trump acquitted. And everything the jury is being told destroys whatever credibility Michael Cohen might have, which I don't think is very much to start. And, you know, these are the state's witnesses doing this. You know, once the jury finds out the guy's a convicted perjurer, whose most recent lie is that he was lying about lying when he took the original plea deal for lying, I mean, it's just, this can't be good for the state. I mean, their entire case hangs on a convicted liar that no other witness trusted, liked, or wanted to do business with, and a guy who's got a clear vendetta against Donald Trump. I mean, come on, even in the bluest of blue New York City, I cannot imagine that this works. And I'm not the only one that thinks this. Joining me right now is CNN legal analyst Joey Jackson and criminal defense attorney Bill Brennan. He represented Donald Trump in his payroll, uh, Donald Trump's payroll corporation in a 2022 case. It's great to see you guys. Thank you for being here. Joey, let's first go inside the courtroom and what kind of played out yesterday. Reporters, CNN reporters inside the courtroom, they noted how intently and closely the jurors were paying attention to the witnesses <clears throat> that were on the stand. And I, it, it, that's, to me, you have to kind of read the body language, and obviously you can't speak to them, but it always, it's always so interesting and important to kind of try to read into that. What does it tell you? Yeah, so, you know, it's often difficult, Kate, right, because you're reading tea leaves. Right. However, here's what I like about that. What I like about that is it shows their engagement, and that's significant, right? If you have a jury that has their mind made up, why are they so wrapped and why are they having, being so attentive to the questions and the answers? So if anything, that tells you that you have a jury that wants to learn information, that wants to do the right thing, and ultimately wants to render the proper determination. And so to me, it's important. You know, Aaron Burnett said last night, you know, that she was, you know, she was when she was in the courtroom, it was interesting. It was almost like a tennis volley, you know, the question, the answer, the question, the answer. And they didn't look at Trump. And to me, that's important, too. He's not testifying. He's sitting there as a defendant in the case. So don't know which way they're leaning, don't know how they're absorbing or processing the information. But we do know, based upon that, that they are paying close attention. I mean, honestly, they're probably on pins and freaking needles, man. They probably have got a pool going on which day and which witness will actually talk about a crime, like literally any kind of crime. They're all probably wondering what the hell they're even doing there. And that, that's probably exactly what's going on. But whatever's going on, this does sound like a reasonable group. And I hope that this guy is right. I hope they do want to learn something. I hope they do intend to render a proper decision. But all indications look that way. And Bill, Donald Trump's attorneys, they've been trying to definitely paint Michael Cohen as an unreliable witness. He has yet to come, obviously take the stand. But we are hearing from other witnesses about their interactions with Michael Cohen. This is a choice by the prosecution. How do you think he is being painted even before he takes the stand? And how do you think the jury will per perceive, perceives him already? Well, good morning, Kate, and thanks for having me. I agree with Joey. You want those jurors to have that Wimbledon neck, you know, watching back and forth the volley of the question and the answers. And I don't think we have to guess how he's being uh, painted or perceived. Uh, the witness on the stand yesterday, I think it was Davidson, said, you know, I didn't trust Cohen. And Cohen is a polluted source. He's going to take the stand, uh, being convicted of lying to Congress, a convicted felon, and he's got an act to grind with the defendant. He went from a sycophant to uh, Donald Trump to uh, now somebody who's you know, kind of out to get him. And jurors pick up on that. 
jurors pick up when, when a witness seems to have skin in the game. So I think uh, Cohen could be a disaster for the prosecution. And if you take it uh, so far, if you take the uh, witnesses that we've heard from so far, all you've really heard is that Cohen uh, went out and got a home equity loan on Cohen's house without telling Cohen's wife, and Cohen negotiated a deal uh, with Davidson and the AMI people, and Cohen formed the co a corporation. It's starting to sound like Michael Cohen really should be the one that's on trial here. And, and really, when you look at it, he's actually been charged, tried, and convicted for what it sounds like is exactly what happened here and all that really happened here. The federal government already convicted the guy in his scheme, basically, of one count of causing an unlawful campaign contribution and another count of causing an excessive campaign contribution, which is exactly what this is. It's Cohen's contacts, Cohen's idea, Cohen's plan, Cohen's actions, Cohen's money, even. The only thing someone from the Trump organization allegedly did was write his paycheck in the wrong line in some book that was really for no one other than the company's private accountants. I mean, this case is not going well for the state. I mean, if all this early testimony is to set the table for their star witness who is allergic to the truth as it is, this is not going well. And if they fail as miserably as it looks like they're going to, you may as well just swear the guy into the presidency right then and there in that courtroom. The banker said he never spoke to the defendant. He never heard from the defendant. Uh, you know, there's a, a strong narrative here that the defense could craft. that Cohen went rogue and he was looking for a little pat on the head from uh, his boss and uh, he came up with this scheme on his own. It might sell. So Davidson just forever. For that is exactly right, man. And I think that will actually sell. And, and you know, this is what happens. These are the results when people who are supposed to be upholding and enforcing the laws are using their offices for political purposes. I mean, this is going to blow up in their faces because here's the thing. If you're going to bring a case against a candidate, especially one from the opposing party in an election year or, or ever, really ever, you better cross all the T's and dot all the I's. I mean, the man has been accusing you of a witch hunt for almost a freaking decade now. And every day you prove him more and more right every single day. But that's just my take, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, guys, be a part of our growth. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next one.